You're live. Everyone, and welcome to the Bass Fishing Network talk show brought to you by Bass Fishing Network Live. We are proudly sponsored by Bass Bully Nation. Make sure you leave a comment down below of a question you would like to ask Seth. And if that, uh, we will randomly pick a question, ask it, and then you will receive a prize pack from Bass Bully Nation. Seth, how you doing tonight, man? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. We're, uh, we're glad to have you. So I just got to ask you to start off. How did you feel when you was getting a haircut from Mark Zona? I was terrified. What led you to do that? Well, I needed a haircut, and we were filming that day. I was like, you might as well cut it on the show. And he uh, he told me he went to beauty school, but after the haircut, I'm determined that's a lie. <laughs> it wasn't very good? No, he left a lot of long, random strands that I had to clean up with the buzzer. Is it is it growing back good now? You all good now? Yeah, yeah, I think it looks good. I got trimmed up, cleaned up a little bit. Right. Well, I follow you on uh, Instagram. You post some cool stuff, and I was seeing the other day that you got you a new truck. How's that been for you? I did. Uh, yeah, it's working good. Same as the uh, truck I had before. I just only had a couple hundred thousand miles on it, so right. it's time for a new one. Right. Do you have a wrap design for it yet? Yeah, I'm basically running the same wrap I had last year. What all what all goes into uh designing a wrap? Because a lot of guys, you know, that watches the Bassmaster Elite series, they they you know, they want to know how do you guys design them and what's the process that of that is like. Um actually the art guy at Rapala designs my wrap for me. I got a few major sponsors I gotta get on there and he lays it all out and sends it off to the wrap place and they template it for the, the boat and truck. And I don't know what they do after that. I'm never there, but I think I'm sure it's a lot of heat guns and stretching and pulling. Right. Have you, uh, have you changed any major sponsors this year? Uh, no, no. Keeping all my same major ones, picked up a couple of new smaller ones, but, uh, you know, I, I really like the brands I work with and they've been good to me and I'd like to be with them for as long as I can. Right. Well, I know you're fishing the uh, upcoming Elite Tour. So, what will be your uh, what will be your favorite stop on the uh, Elite Tour? Uh, probably the last one. We're going to Cayuga Lake in New York in August. It should be pretty similar to like my home lake, Lake Minnetonka. So, really looking forward to that one. Right? Yeah. Is isn't that a big smallmouth lake up there? Uh, it's actually a large mouth. It'll probably be like a deep grass flipping deal. That's something we do a lot back home. Um, right. I'm kind of anticipating the bite to be similar to that that time of year. You, anyway. you uh, like fishing for more large mouth rather than small mouth? Uh, I mean, I, I have more fun small mouth fishing, but like our lakes back home, we most of them are large mouth lakes. We got Mille Lacs and a couple other good small mouth fisheries, but they're kind of spread out, and every little lake in Minnesota is a pretty good largemouth fishing lake. Right. Well, I want to go ahead and, uh, you know, switch over to the fishing part of the interview. What's okay. your favorite way to catch smallmouth? Favorite way to catch them? Uh, probably a topwater bait, like a walking bait or a popper-style bait. Do you have any in particular, any brand? Yeah, the Storm Arashi Cover Pop. That's probably my favorite popper. Um, really fun way to catch them. Um, we get our bigger smallmouths on, on our lakes. That's all pretty much deep water, you know, drop shot and swim bait fishing, and that's fun. But uh, my, my favorite place to fish them is on the, the Mississippi River. They, get, they don't get near as big. Like a four-pounder is a really nice one. But uh, they get really shallow, and, they you know, they just live in three foot of water or less pretty much all year. So. You can catch them on top water. The water's off color. They they fight like crazy, and you catch them in like a foot of water. So that, that's my favorite way to catch them. But you know, most of our big small mouths, so, you know, they're caught out of our bigger, deep, clear lakes. So it's a lot of drop shotting and uh, you know, swim bait fish and stuff like that. Right. Here's some uh, questions from members in our group. One is, what is your number one go to bait for night fishing in early spring? Uh, I've, I've honestly never night fished before, so I don't know. Right. I know guys catch them on like a big bladed black spinner bait a lot, but 
Um, that's not something we do a lot up north. Uh, you know, our our summers are so mild or, you know, you're not missing anything by not fishing during the day. And I can't see that well at night. So I, I've never really exactly. done it. Okay. Here's another one from one of our members ever fish Kentucky Lake Paris landing area. Yeah. I fished two elite series tournaments out of there. Um, last time we were there, had a good tournament. It was earlier in the year. There was a little shad spawn going on. Um, caught them good swimming and just a white swim jig around some of the docks and bushes and stuff. And the first time we went there was, uh, you know, prime ledge season. I, I wasn't a real big fan of it. It was really crowded and, uh, you know, there just wasn't enough schools to go around. And I, I just hate fishing around people. Right. Just pretty hard fishing around a crowd, huh? Yeah. It, it was just hard to get away from, you know, there was only so many schools out on those ledges and there was more boats than schools and, it just, right. I don't really make the TVA in the summer. I'd much rather go there in the spring when the fish are up shallow and spread out and kind of do your own thing. Exactly. Well, what's your, uh, what's your favorite time and favorite bait to use on a drop shot? Uh, I actually drop shot a like little tiny swim bait a lot or a uh, bio spawn makes an exo stick. I'll trim it down and fish that wacky style on a drop shot a lot. But uh, I throw a lot of like little, you know, three inch swim baits on drop shot works really well for small mouse. Right. Okay, everybody. Richard Beal was the contest winner. Um, so we will contact you and get your information, and send the prize back over to you. So back to uh back to the questions. Uh how much do you depend on your electronics during during tournaments? Do they play a big factor for you or just how do you like to fit them into your tournaments? Yeah, in in some sense they're always playing a major factor, whether it's you know, I mean, if you're fishing shallow, obviously you're not graphing fish or side scanning or anything like that. But, you know, the mapping is a huge, huge for, you know, all these places we go are massive. Most of them I've never been to. So when you figure out a little pattern or something, you can look around on your mapping and, you know, find similar areas and try to run a pattern. And then, you know, come smallmouth tournaments or, you know, late summer largemouth tournaments where they're out deep, I'll spend, you know, majority of my practice crap and the uh, you know someone our down site or uh, down imaging side scan all that stuff so i spent a lot of time behind them right um exactly uh what what uh graphs do you use in deep water like what's your setup for deep water fishing on your depth um, I, I run the helix 12s i'll run i got two of them at the council i'll run one I have two different uh, 2D sonars. I'll one map or one unit. I'll run basically all map with a little bit of 2D, and then my other unit I'll run a three-way split. Majority of it being side scan, and then I have all of a small window for down scan and a small window for 2D. Right now, when you said hummingbird, doesn't hummingbird have a uh, like a live feature on there? Uh, units as well yeah like they the do. yeah you can uh no it's not like the live scope it's it's for mapping um you know going a lot of the places out there don't have great maps if you're fishing like smaller lakes or um you know stuff that just isn't really popular um their live feature is actually um you can drive around idle around side scan and stuff and it'll essentially make you a uh up to date map uh you know contour map of whatever right. you drove over and kind of fill in all the gaps and stuff so that's really cool it's it's not something i use a lot because most of the places we go you know they're you know big tournament lakes your gunnersville's uh places like that they got them all mapped really well but you know if you're fishing some smaller reservoirs or off the beaten path stuff it, it's a cool feature you know your home lake or whatever you can go out there and you know spend a little time idle in the lake and it'll it'll create a, a contour map for whatever you drove over. Do you, do you save a lot of your uh, contour maps and contour lines for next time, or do you just delete them? Um, no, I actually haven't, you know, really mapped anything out. Like I said, uh, every place we go for tournaments and stuff, that's about all the time I get to fish anymore uh, is, uh, you know, home and bird with the Lake Master. They got them mapped out one foot contours already. Just pop in the card and go. So, it's not right. something I do, but you know, like I said, if you're 
if you got a home lake that isn't mapped, you can you can go out and make your own. So pretty cool feature. Right. We have another question from uh, one of our members, um, and it was, have you ever fished Caddo Lake in Louisiana? And if so, any tips? Uh, never been there. I got a buddy that lives right by there. Sounds like a, it's a pretty shallow water deal. Uh, dark water, a lot of cypress tree fishing, frog fishing, stuff like that, but ne never actually been there. Right. I actually got a kayak trip down there uh, in March. Yeah. Um, I know they catch a bunch of big ones out of there, though. Right. Um, another question was, uh, when do you decide when to switch baits if they're not biting? Uh, I mean, you got to feel it out. It, it depends where you're at too. You know, if, if, if you're fishing, you know, prime time on a really good lake or, you know, you're going to get a lot of bites that day, I'll, I'll switch baits very often. But, um, you know, some of the places we go to during certain times of the year, if you're getting five six seven eight bites a day you're doing really good so uh places like that if i if i can get a couple bites fairly quick on whatever it may be it, i'm more likely to kind of lock it in my hands and fish with it all day you know right here's another one from one of our members um it said how does he feel about a lot of the pros leaving especially now that he has pr proved that he can fish with the big guns uh i was i was kind of disappointed um and I was hoping more of them would stay, especially the younger guys. Um, I think that kind of needed to happen to get a lot of the older guys out of there. It's, it's just really hard to get kicked off the Elite Series once you've been, you know, doing it for 15, 20 years. But a lot of those guys hadn't really been fishing that well the last five, ten years. And, uh, you know, it kind of needed to happen to make more room for new up-and-coming guys. I just, you know, wish those – you know, 30 year old and less hammers would have stayed, but it is what right. it is. What's your, uh, what's your absolute favorite lake to fish of all time? Uh, probably it used to be my It was really good before it got all the pressure. Um, I actually haven't been to this. I'd say Lake Vermilion is my favorite, but I haven't been up there in like five years. So. Right. Do you have a favorite technique you fish there? uh it, it's an interesting lake it's uh it's got that tea colored water and it never really gets super hot and honestly when i go up there i'll like it's like the few places in the country you can catch like nice small mouse boat dock fishing so i just just go up there and like flip a jig or a tube on like 20 pound fluoro and crack like four pound smallies under boat docks it's pretty fun right okay now i know i asked you uh what was your favorite way to catch small mouse so what's your favorite way to catch large mouse uh flipping a big jig in the grass really oh, yeah. do you have any particular jig you use? yeah i got a couple depending on how deep and how thick the grass is they're both outcast tackle jigs one's a stealth fighter tungsten jig i like that and like half ace and or half ounce and five ace and then if i got to fish a real heavy jig they make a outcast makes an rtx jig i'll flip that in like three quarter or one ounce Right. Now, I'm guessing you're using braid on some of that as well. Oh, yeah. Braid. Uh, the lighter jigs, I'll do braid to uh, like a 20-pound fluorocarbon leader. And then the big, big jigs, like the one-ounces, I, I usually fish them just straight braid. Right. Did, what really uh, makes you decide to go with braid over fluorocarbon, uh, straight braid over fluorocarbon? Is it just the cover or the yeah, water? Yeah, the, the density of the cover. If the grass is thick enough, it's not going to matter, but. Um, a lot of times some of that good mill foil stuff, you know, there's just a strand every six inches to a foot. And when they got that much visibility, those fish in that grass, I'll, I'll flip fluorocarbon. But if it's like straight matted up, super thick stuff, I'll just flip straight braid. Right. Here's another question from one of our members. On northern smallmouth plates, are you able to milk run waypoints from weeks or even years ago? Do you need to run new water constantly? Uh, I always run a lot of new water, but a lot of that stuff doesn't move, especially on like the natural lakes. A lot of them live around you know, larger rock and stuff like that. So those don't move. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can go to waypoints from 10 years ago and catch them, but in order to like win a tournament or especially a multi-day tournament, you're going to have to fish a lot of new water. You're not going to be able to, you know, rely on spots that were good in practice or, you know, years before. 
Right. What's your uh, What's your favorite bait to use when bass are schooling? Uh, usually a top water walking bait like a Storm Marashi uh, top walker. You can throw it a mile, um, which usually comes in handy when they're coming up school and it's just hard to lock them down. They move so much. So um, it's something I can cover a ton of water with. And I, I like top waters or swim baits usually if they're schooling. Do you have a particular favorite color you have in the Arashi? Uh, yeah, just a bone color or, uh, you know, any kind of minnow shad color. But that, that white one's pretty good. Right. Okay, if you could only use five baits for a whole tournament, what would they be and why? Largemouth or smallmouth? Uh, uh, let's do largemouth. Um, five baits for a whole tournament. Uh, I'm going to flip a Texas rig tube. I'm going to flip a jig. Uh, I'll take a, a outcast tackle swim jig. Uh, uh, stick worm and uh, Rapala BX Pratt square bill. BX Pratt, exactly. What is that? I've never heard of that. Uh, it's new Rapala square bill. And if you give me a six one, I'd throw a frog in there, right? Um, here's a question from another one of our uh members of the page What is the first thing you look for when fishing for smallies? Is it strictly electronics or something specific on the bank? Uh, it depends on the place you're at and the time of year. If it's a, if it's a natural lake and it's you know midsummer on into fall, it'll pretty much be all electronics. But if it's uh any type of river or a natural lake earlier in the year you know spring early summer i mean i do a lot of stuff just um i mean not necessarily bed fishing but up shallow sight fishing a lot of places go really clear um you know looking around with my eyes and stuff and looking for cruising fish and stuff like that right now i know you mentioned bed fishing do you have uh an approach to bed fishing or a certain bait you like to use uh yeah every fish is different um you know most of them you can catch on like a texas rig or a drop shot um some are tricky and you got to throw a bunch of different stuff at them but um every, every single one's different but the majority of them you can catch on either a texas rig or a drop shot right now we had a discussion about this actually on our page uh, it was about bass fishing it was about guys that was for it and was against it do you think it really hurts you know, the bass when you're fishing them off of beds or does that have any, you know, consequences? Uh, I mean, they've proved through studies and stuff that it, does, it doesn't affect the population of a, a lake at all, bed fishing. So I, I don't mind it. Um, I'm kind of against smallmouth bed fishing just because they're, they're so aggressive and so dumb. Like anyone can catch them first cast right. at the time of the jump shot. So I, I really don't smallmouth bed fish at all when I'm at home, but I actually enjoy largemouth bed fish and just, it seems like you really got to work them and, you know, there's a lot of fish, a lot of people can't catch and, uh, you know, it's more of an art to catch them largemouth off beds. Smallmouths are like, like my wife could catch every one of them, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, would you rather fish top water all day or flip and pitch all day? Oh, that's a tough one. I oh, guess whatever yeah. one they're biting better. Uh, top water, I guess, is more fun, but I, I like setting the hook flip in too. Right. Uh, what's your approach when fishing lakes you've never been to before? Um, I do a lot of Google Earth looking, especially if it's going to be a shallow deal. Spend a lot of time on just looking on satellite images. Um, you know, it depends on the time of year and stuff, but uh. Do a lot of map study and stuff like that. I'll do a little bit of internet looking around, more so just for, you know, what kind of winning weights come out of those places. You know, is it a 15-pound-a-day place, 20-pound-a-day place, just to get a feel for, you know, you know what kind of size fish you got to catch to do well. Is that uh, I, don't, I don't like getting a lot of info. I, I tried that a few years ago, and it just ended up hurting me more than helping me. So uh, I kind of just like to get out there and feel it out. Right. Um, here's another uh, question from one of our members of the page. After fishing the classic, what is your opinion of Lake Hartwell? Uh, awesome lake. 
It's a great place for a classic. We're going back there this year. I'm I'm real excited about it. Um, really really fun lake. A lot of fish in it. A lot of nice fish in it. Do you have your game plan figured out yet? Uh, no, I, I don't know exactly when we're gonna. I think there's gonna be. I think we'll be there sometime around the spawn. So I'll I'll look at that more. I kind of like to take them just one at a time. Our our first one's St. John's River, so kind of just that's like the only thing I can think about right now. Do you, do you have any history with the St. John's or? I uh, fished one tournament there. It's uh, I fished probably like five tournaments in Florida. It's the only place I've ever cast a check in Florida. So I guess that's a good thing. But I, out of all the places I've been in Florida, it's my favorite. Fish is a little different than the rest of them. It's, you, you can power fish there a little more than you can on the rest of the Florida places. All right, now I know I asked you what was your favorite bait to catch, uh, when, to throw when bass are schooling, but do you have any tips for people uh, when trying to catch fish that are schooling? Um, it's really just getting a bait in there as fast as you possibly can when they come up. You know, when you're running down the lake and you see birds bombing or something like that, that'll tip you off to where they're at. But um, depending on how they are, some places you go, they're they're pretty easy to catch you can catch them if you're you know get your bait in there a minute too late or whatever but some places you go especially later in the year late summer early fall when those fish get really pressured and really smart like you really got to get your bait in there while they're coming up so you know i see a lot of people will just keep casting and waiting for them to come up and uh if if it's an area where you have to be in there as they're coming up like i don't even cast just literally cruise around and look for them to come up and then you know try to get a, a top water bait in there as fast as you can when they do come up right i'm uh we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the show i'm gonna ask you some speed questions just pick your favorite out of the two and we'll go ahead and wrap it up okay jerky or summer sausage jerky dogs or cats dogs for sure spinner bait or chatter bait mm, spinner bug Spinner bait. Yeah. Well, we uh we thank you for being on the show. Uh we you know, we really do. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. And uh also my producer, which can't get in here at the time, he wants to thank you for being on the show. Yeah, no and, problem. Uh, every, and everyone that's wondering where Karen at, uh she actually could not make the show due to sickness. So everyone at BFN is wishing her a speedy recovery. So, Seth, thank you for being on the show, and uh, hopefully we do it again sometimes. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Take care, guys. Have a great night, man. You too. We'll see you.